Hello YouTube and welcome to my walkthrough of curling on Hack in the Box. This machine became decommissioned uh, either yesterday or today and I popped it a few weeks ago so I'm going to show you how to get into this machine. So to start off I have an Nmap scan which I can go ahead and spit out right now. Um, looks like we're running two services, SSH and um, an Apache server running Joomla. Uh, the SSH doesn't look too out of date, neither does Apache, so I think we're going to start off by just browsing the site. Um, of course, I also did the DURB scan, which I'll spit out for you right now. Uh, we see some folders like Administrator you can browse through. Pretty standard stuff when you're running Joomla. So let's go to the Joomla site, if I can type it properly. And we've got some interesting posts, um, and, by inter and by interesting I mean really boring. But we do see that there's a user called Floris in there, which is interesting. And if you actually go ahead and you um, look at the source of the site, I'm going to do that with Burp Suite. You could also use just the inspect tool. Uh, let's see, center repeater. Drop that because I don't care. All right, if you look at the actual source of that index page, if you scroll to the very bottom, you see something interesting. You see a comment that says secret.txt. Now, if you did a, uh, an inclusive enough scan with Derb or GoBust or what have you, um, and if Secret of TXC was in your word list you were using, you would have, you would have picked up on that, but this is another way to, to find the little hint. So let's see what that includes. So sure enough, it looks like a potential password, but it also looks like it might be Base64 encoded. So I'm going to go ahead and Base64 decode that and see if it comes out as anything sensible. So let's pipe that to Base64. D. Sure enough, that looks like a password. So we know that on the page here, somebody signed their name Floris. So I'm going to try to log in to the admin panel with that username and the password I just pulled up from that file. Sure enough, we can get in. So the next step is remote code execution, which is actually pretty easy to do. On Joomla, you can just go to Components or Extensions, or rather Templates. Templates. Click on Bs3, and you can actually just create any old files you want, which is fantastic. So I'm going to say New File. I call it Reverse. Make it a PHP file, and now I need to go ahead and paste in a PHP Reverse shell. Um, my IP is 13.154. If I go back here. I already have a reverse shell downloaded uh, that you should be able to find on GitHub, no problem. Here we go. Yeah, there's the credits to the author up there. I recommend, oh, I recommend using this because it's pretty sweet. I just have to make sure that my IP is set properly, which it is. Yes. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the contents of this PHP file because it's all ready to go. Put that right in here. And next up is to start my Netcat listener. We're ready to accept the connection from the reverse shell. And to actually execute this file we just uploaded, we go to 150 slash templates slash b3 slash reverse.php. And sure enough, I get a shell. And if we go to echo zero, that is a bash session. So that's pretty sweet. Um, so next up, you might do a lot of numeration, but I'm going to kind of cut to the chase and go to cd slash home. We can see that Floris has pretty lax permissions on their user folder. So we can actually go into their user folder and see what's in there. Um, we're not going to be able to cat user.txt or admin area, which is a directory. We can cat password backup, whoever. So let's go ahead and do that. What we receive here is a hex dump of presumably what's a file. So I'm going to copy the contents of that. I'm going to go to a web-based tool that I'd like to use called um, CyberChef. Cyber Chef. Cyber Chef. Pull that up over here. Paste that in there and say from hex dump. Sure enough, we got something that looks like a file. If you look up this magic number here, BZH, that is uh, basically a magic number for a BZIP file. So this is clearly a compressed file. Um, I would copy and paste it, 
into nano here, but it's gonna screw stuff up because of text encodings and stuff. So I'm just going to save that to a file, call it password dot um, z. All right, save that through downloads. I'm going to go ahead and use 7-zip to open that up. So let's open up the thing I just downloaded, password.7z. Sure enough, we see a file in here uh, called password.txt. So if I open that up, I get that. So that's pretty neat. Let's write that down. Looks like that's probably the password to um, the user on this machine. And conveniently enough, we can see that um, SSH is open on this machine. So let's just try SSHing in as Floris on that IP with the password I just didn't add from that file. Sure enough, it lets me in. So I can go ahead and cat user.txt, and that is the user portion. Um, and so if we do a little bit more enumeration, we can see that we have a folder here called admin area, um, which is interesting. So I'm going to go in there, and we get two things. We get input and report. If I cat input, it's pointing at localhost. So it looks like something's probably grabbing the contents of localhost. If I do cat report, Sure enough, it looks like we have something on the system that every so often is grabbing localhost and spitting it out to a file. So we can exploit this. Um, now, to get the exact command that's using, like if it's using curl or wget and all that good stuff, um, before I was running top-c, I think, grep for curl. And whenever a curl process would start, it would give me the full command line. I'm not going to wait for that to happen. I'm honestly not sure if it's even going to work for me right now. Yeah, that's just somebody opening or listening to their machine. Yeah, if you were doing that at just the right time, you'd see an instance of curl starting, grabbing um, the contents of the input file. So what we can do is we can actually go to this input file, and given that it's using curl, we can put something in here instead, where we say URL equals file, colon, we need to give it three slashes for escape, I think localhost, and then this would take some trial and error, most likely, um, if you were doing this yourself, but I'm just going to spill the beans and let you know that. That will give you a successful directory traversal um, and actually have curl spit out the contents of root.txt. So let's go ahead and save that there, and file has changed, whatever, if I cat input, hopefully it took it, yes it did. So if I do tail-f to watch the output of a report, give it a minute. I just spat out the past 10 lines or so of the old file. So next time curl runs to do this routine backup or this routine check of localhost, it's going to uh, pull root.txt. It's possible to get remote code execution from this. Uh, perhaps I haven't figured out how to do that, but we'll just wait for root.txt to show up. There you go, there you have it. So there's your root.txt. And if we go back here, we can actually see that uh, this file gets over and every time it does that. Probably the machine creator probably just did that just to not spoil the, uh, the box for other people. Um, so one thing that I've been doing, and this hasn't been successful, but you can actually go back into input and let's just paste what we had before, except let's spit out the contents of um, Etsy Shadow. All right. Tail report again. And it will give us um, a copy of the hash and salt for the root user, which we'd be able to spin up hashcat with and run the, an appropriate command to. Um, to actually crack that password, there we have it. So I copy this stuff in here, up to the first colon delimiter, yeah, there we have it. I plop that in a file called uh, hash.txt, which I've already done. Uh, yep, yeah, and that's the same hash. What we do here is we'd say hash cat 64.exe, um, dash M for 1800, that's the type of hash that this is. 
you can see it's dollar sign six, which means I think at what SHA 512 or something like that. Point is dash M1800 corresponds to that. A zero output cracked.txt. Uh, we're going to give the input hash.txt, which I just showed you. Um, and we're going to use uh, rocku.txt. And so that's going to go ahead and run through the entire rocku.txt, like 133 meg passwordless file. Uh, which should go fairly fast. I'm just going to spoil it for you and let you know that it's not in there. I think the creator of this box um, used a pretty strong password, but had it been in rocku.txt, we would be able to get the root password. And I've got a GeForce 1070Ti, so running through it would be pretty quick. But again, it's not in there, so bummer. But yeah, anyway, that was my shot at getting an actual root shell. Other people might have ideas for how to spawn a root shell, but that's the extent of this video from me. So if you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing, and I will make more of these.